Today for Mouse Trap Monday, we're going to test out this crazy mechanical rat trap from 1925. It's called the Surprise Self-Setting Rat Trap because when the rat goes in there and steps on the pedal, it's spring-loaded and it shoots them in the back chamber. This is going to be fun to test out. Now I got this on eBay and it costs $99.99. It's a pretty good price for these old rat traps, but I've always been curious, does it work? And when I do catch rats with it, I'm going to feed them to wild animals in the backyard. So make sure you watch to the end because it's another action-packed episode of Mouse Trap Monday. Only today, it's Rat Trap Monday. Here's a closer look at our surprise self-setting rat trap. The most impressive part about this trap is how all the gears, springs, and levers work together to make a machine that catches rats and then resets itself. The key to catching rats is to draw them in this alley right here. One side we have fingers that are metal wires and on the back we have a door on a hinge that leads to a chamber. In the center of the alley is a place for bait, a little tray, and on either side is a pedal. Those are connected with a lever to the mechanism over here, holding the spring down. When we wind up the spring, it's under tension and it wants to spin around, but it catches. As soon as they step on it, it will go around and push the rat into the back chamber with quite a bit of force, and then it resets itself. So we'll have a rat trapped in back and ready for another rat to come down. It's hard to see, but there's a spring inside the chamber that sits around a rod. As we spin the mechanism on the side, it tightens that spring. There's a little catch at the bottom to hold the tension. If we let it go, it comes back around. They say not to overwind it. We wind it between 10 and 12 times. And then we have the catch right here that holds it in place. Now this rod's connected on the other side to all the mechanisms for the door. The trigger mechanism on the left side of the trap is pretty complicated. We have the rod connected to the spring that's under tension. There's a catch right here. When it goes around, it will reset itself. Right here's the trigger connected down there to the bait pedal. When we push the bait pedal once, it will catch up to 10 rats, but each time we do it, it loses tension. So the first time is much more powerful, and the last one, it might not be enough to catch a rat. Okay, with the spring wound and the trap set, we're ready to go. Our rat will enter right there, step on the pedal, and when it does, it went around twice, but it shoved the rat right in the back chamber. Now every time we push the pedal, it goes around. So one after another, we'll push the rats in the back chamber. I can't wait to see if it works. Let's go set up the motion cameras in the barn and see if they'll enter, push the pedal, and get caught. We're out of spring, we have to rewind it first. Ow. We're ready to go. Well, last night was a very good test to see how well our surprise rat trap works, and I identified quite a few flaws. 
The first problem is when rats ran down the alley and stepped on the trigger pad, it didn't always go off. It took quite a bit of force. Then after catching two rats at one time, we discovered another problem. The rats inside the chamber were behind the door, keeping it from fully opening. So when another rat stepped on the trigger pad, there was resistance on the door and it was able to get out before getting caught. And then our third problem is the door is on a hinge. So inside the rats can lift it up and escape. That happened quite often. So we caught several rats, but in the back, we only have two. This trap should be full of rats, especially the big ones. But instead, we just got a few tiny ones that aren't smart enough to lift the door and escape. Now these are non-native invasive rats called brown rats or Norway rats. So I'm not gonna let them go in the wild. Instead, I'm gonna humanely dispatch them and feed them to wild animals. So let's go set up the motion cameras and see what comes along and enjoys these two rats. Well, even though we had a bunch of problems with our mechanical rat trap, we were still able to feed both an opossum and a skunk. It's kind of funny watching them fight over food. The skunk doesn't know if it wants to spray him or bite him, so it comes sideways with both options ready. Now this rat trap is pretty rare, but nothing compared to the mouse trap made by the same company. The only one I've seen for sale is currently on eBay, and it's around $895 for a tiny little mouse trap. In my last video, I asked for questions for question and answer time, and I got quite a few good ones. First question, what's your favorite fast food restaurant? Good question. We actually don't go out to eat very much. The vast majority of our meals are cooked at home, but when we do go out to eat, it's for something special like ethnic food. I love Korean food, Middle Eastern food, and Indian food. I also like sushi. But as far as drive throughs fast food, occasionally we'll go through McDonald's and get some fries. Our favorite is a local fast food called Burgerville. They have really good food and I also like Wendy's. So I'd say probably Wendy's is my favorite national and then McDonald's as a guilty pleasure every once in a while. I'm talking I maybe eat there six times a year, but I do love a good quarter pounder with cheese. Next question. This viewer says, unfortunately, your videos aren't appearing in my notifications. I get this comment a lot. Viewers say they're not seeing notifications when I upload a video. And that's because when you subscribe to a channel, YouTube made the automatic default personalized. What the personalized setting means is YouTube will decide if they're going to show you the video or not. They choose what you see. So you have to change it to the bell that says all, but there's still a problem with that. Currently 19.2% of my subscribers clicked on the all bell notifications, but on the device you're watching the YouTube videos, you also have to enable YouTube notifications. So 9.2% of my subscribers that think they're getting all notifications have not enabled it and they're not getting notified. And only 10% of my subscribers are actually getting notified every time. So with over a million subscribers to my channel, the vast majority aren't receiving notifications. But that's okay. I really appreciate the viewers that tune in every week. So thank you so much. Next question. I've seen you cook and eat skunk, rat, and nutria. If you could, what is one animal you'd love to try to cook and eat? Well, one kind of meat I want to try is alligator. And recently I got some, so we're going to cook it up. I don't know the best way to cook alligator, so send me your recipe in the comment down below. But yes, the food I want to try most is alligator. Okay, that's it for question and answer time. If you have a question you want me to answer, leave it in the comment section below, especially under the comment that I pin up top. I'll read through those, pick the best comments, and answer them in the next video. And thank you so much for all the people that watch my videos and subscribe. I've posted over 600 videos on YouTube, and currently I'm posting a new video every Monday. So if you want to subscribe, please consider clicking the button right here and turn on that bell notification. And make sure you enable your device. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see the best videos on how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, stay tuned.